Hey, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Robert sitting here with Chad. And today we're going to talk about generosity. Generosity we see all throughout the pages of scripture, including page one of the Bible. So if you think about Genesis 1, you, you see this story, this, this account of God creating everything. He, he speaks light into existence. He, he speaks the earth, the animals, the sky, the sea. And then he creates mankind and he gives it all away. And he gives mankind dominion over all that's been created. So right out of the gate, if all you had was page one of the Bible, you would see that God is, is generous. It's part of his nature. Chad, talk to us a little bit about God's generosity. And, and even if we take like a big 30,000 foot view of the Bible, all kind of throughout the Bible. Yeah, so really we're talking about generosity but today, but obviously we're talking about the generosity of God. So this is going to be a fun theological discussion mm -hmm. on the character of God. Um, when we talk about the character of God, we're talking about um, not just what he is, although what he is is a product of who he is. So God's relational. He's not one, he's three. He's not three, he's one. That's part of who he is. And then with that, what he is. Mm -hmm. And so who God is, is God is generous. And so what is he? He's generous and he's continually generous um, in ways that are beyond, I think, most of our understanding or, um, or just knowledge things. He's generous in ways we don't, we don't think about. Yeah. Even John, when he describes love, he says, God is love. And, and not saying that, that love is God, but God is love. It's a, the very nature of who he is. And so all throughout scripture, you see God loves. It's what he does. Yeah. And, and he loves by giving. He loves by choosing to serve, even though he's God. He, he chooses to serve itty bitty mankind out of, out of love. Love is a, it, it's fruit of his generosity. You, you see generosity playing out because God loves so much. God loves the world so much that he gave. Yeah. Um, you see that all throughout the pages of scripture. What's um, ironic to me, and, and I, w I was in this camp for a long time, and there, there may be some people listening that are, is you have this idea when you think about God, oh, well, he's just really moody. Mm. Um, he's just PO'd, you know, he's, he's waiting on us to mess up. Um, you know, you read things in the Old Testament, um, especially certain small sections of scripture, if you don't understand all of that in the context of the whole, I can understand why we would feel that way. I understand why I felt that way at, at one point. But actually the whole story of scripture is about the generosity of God. Mm -hmm. uh, grace itself is a gift. Um, grace is mercy is you don't give something what they deserve, mm -hmm. you know, someone what they deserve, mercy. Uh, grace is you give someone something they don't deserve. Mm -hmm. And and God is generous. And then out of that generosity flows his, his grace. So thus what you said a moment ago. So now we're going to get really theological. You ready? Everybody got their thinking cap on, grab a cup of coffee. Here we go. So God is Trinity. He's not one, he's three. He's not three, he's one, which begs the question, why did God create the world? Was it because he's lonely? Well, no, he can't be. Mm -hmm. uh, the very essence of who and what God is, is he is community. He is friendship. He is love. It's just what you said a moment ago. So the Father, the Son, and the Spirit for all eternity have been in friendship and fellowship with, with one another, one God and yet three persons, three persons and yet one God. Can you explain that? Not really. Uh, you just think multiplication, one times one times one equals one. Mm -hmm. Okay. But that means God has never been lonely. He can't be because of the very essence of who and what he is, which begs the question, then why did he create the world? Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't create the world to get love. He already had it. So why did he create the world? Well, to give love. Mm -hmm. Generosity is the very essence of who and what he is. Um, and he invites, I mean, this is mind blowing, right? So he invites little old you and little old me into that fellowship of the Trinity and uses words like, call me father. That's what mm -hmm. Jesus called me. Jesus is our brother. It's sealed by the Holy Spirit. To be invited into the family of God is an act of God's grace. To be invited into that Trinitarian fellowship. I mean, that is yeah. uber mind-blowing, beyond our comprehension, 
generosity. Yeah. But all of the universe, the creation of the world that he gives away to mankind, we've really screwed it up, but that's a different topic. All of that is the benevolent, generous, loving, almighty God. Yeah. Yeah. So you talk about God's generosity. You talk about his love. You talk about all all that he gave us and invited us in. Um, And then you mentioned, yeah, we did mess it up, which if it weren't for Genesis 3, Genesis 3 is where, you know, God says, hey, you have a choice. You could choose good. You could choose evil. You could choose to trust me. You could choose not to. Mankind goes, eh, we're going to listen to the serpent. We're going to, we're going to try this. We're going to, we're going to eat the fruit. Um, and you have the fall. If it weren't for Genesis three, you'd have Genesis one and two, and then you'd have revelation 21 and 22. That'd be the whole Bible. It'd be more of a pamphlet than a, <laughs> than like a thick book. Um, but you have Genesis three and now you have this giant mess that we're incapable of cleaning up. Yet God's generosity, his love, his compassion, it doesn't stop at Genesis 3. He goes, I got a plan. Yeah. And, and the rest of your Bible, the rest of our Bible, it's unfolding this beautiful plan of God saying, we're going to get back to Genesis 1 and 2. It's going to look a little different in Revelation 21, 22. It's going to be a city instead of a garden, you know, all, all of that. But he doesn't give up on us. Um, the Bible is a beginning, middle, and new beginning book. Yeah. Yeah. And so God's not abandoning the plan. No, he's actively working the redemptive plan. Yeah. And so he's inviting us now to be a part of that, that journey. So God, not only does he adopt us into the family, not only does he rescue us in spite of ourselves. Now he says, I want you to be a part of what I'm doing in yeah. the world. Yeah. Uh, talk about that. Talk about this invitation that, that God's given us to actually partner with the almighty, holy God who spoke all the universe into existence. He, he desired a partnership with Adam and Eve in the garden in, in creating and in subduing and all of that. He invites Adam and Eve to join in that process. And now his act of redemption, he's inviting us to be a part of the process as well. Talk about, talk about that. Yeah, well, it, all of that, even the inviting in the midst of the brokenness is an act of grace. I mean, all along, he's wanting to, uh, again, give. Mm-hmm. Uh, share his love, invite us into relationship with him. That's why we're created. That's, that's why we exist. Uh, right now, to your point, so he creates Adam and Eve perfection. Uh, one of the gifts he gave was free will. Mm-hmm. Um, Adam and Eve had a decision. They could do it or not do it. They decided to do it. And in that, they decided not to trust God, but to trust something else for their well-being. Um, as a result, you have the fall and, and you, have, you have brokenness. So even the free will that God gave us was an act of his benevolence and generosity. We're not puppets on a string. Uh, we are creatures created in the image of God that, that can choose. By the same token, uh, in that choice, there is a plan that overrides all of that, and he will bring all things into redemption. And I'm not real sure pe- theologians have argued for hundreds of years, how does that actually play out? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I just know that it's uh, not necessarily totally logical to me, Mm -hmm. but it's theological. It makes sense to God, Uh, which if you've got God figured out, uh, you don't worship the real God. You probably invented one that you you could make sense of. That's that's exactly right. And I'll just go ahead and add this too. If God always agrees with you, you don't worship the real God either. He he ought to keep you just a little shaken so that uh, we work out our salvation with fear and, and, and trembling. Um, what was the question again? I kind of went off. So on God that. invites us now to be part of. Yeah, yeah, it's just, it's the same thing. So so now, um, he invited Adam and Eve, obviously, you know, to trust him, and they didn't. Uh, and he invites us to be part of his redemptive plan. So what we're doing is we're learning the ways of his kingdom. Mm-hmm. We're learning the way he wants to do things. And then what you and I do, if you're a follower of Jesus, if if you've trusted God. Uh, and through your faith in Jesus with your life, then what we do is, you know, Jesus told us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What we're doing is we're bringing God's ways into a broken world Mm -hmm. uh, and letting people know, hopefully, um, what God is like. Um, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How would God do this? Mm -hmm. Um, God has been so generous and graceful to me so that flows in and through my life out to other people. It's your kingdom come, your will be done. We're to take the ways of heaven into the the broken world. And that's how we partner with him um, in his redemptive plan. Yeah. So in light of a generous God who has boundless generosity towards us, 
uh, one one of the indicators of okay, I'm submitting my life to God is that we would reflect that that same generosity. What does that look like in, in the life of somebody who's wanting to follow Jesus? Um, how how can I look at my life and hold up a mirror and go, okay, am I operating with a, a mindset of generosity mm-hmm. um, without giving a specific you know number? Once you've given this much or once you've done this many you know acts of service, for, how how can I tell if I actually have a mindset, a filter of generosity in my life as a follower of Jesus? Yeah. So uh, the first thing I would say is okay. Stop thinking about and you you made reference to this just a second ago. Stop thinking about uh, earning or trying to get brownie points with God, or, okay, God wants me to give, how much is enough? Let's let's set all of that aside, because theologically, and we just talked about it, what God wants is a relationship with you. Mm-hmm. So what does it mean to get to know God? And as we get to know God as his children, to reflect the way of the family, mm-hmm. which is what you're saying. Okay, so God is really generous. How do I reflect the generosity of the family and be about the family business? Um, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So all, all of that thinking now is is connected. Hopefully, if you're listening, you're still awake. Uh, or you started <laughs> listening because you thought it might help you fall asleep and maybe we're achieving that goal. But anyway, um, so now we're, now we're reflecting the, the, the family. Why does God want us to be generous? Well, well, well here's, here's the thing. That might even be the wrong question. I think the question would be, how does a right understanding of God make us generous? Mm-hmm. Because a right understanding of God is no longer in the realm of what does God want me to do? It's more in the realm of this is who I am. Mm-hmm. When we see what God sees, we'll always do what God, what God says. Mm-hmm. So what are we saying? Okay, the natural byproduct of understanding the amazing grace of God is generosity. So let's even just go with the Lord's Prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, we just said your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Also in that prayer, forgive us our debts yeah. as we also forget our, our debtors. That is the same, same thought. It's the flow of the generosity of God. It's the flow of his grace. So God, I'm guilty, forgive my debt. And as you do that, that empowers me to forgive those who've sinned against me. So I've sinned against you, they've sinned against me. Let the flow of your forgiveness yeah. take care of both of those things. Yeah, and, and Jesus gives this beautiful parable to illustrate this, because Jesus gives these parables, because these are complex things, right? And we're trying to wrap our minds around it. And I love it, because Jesus tells a story that we can kind of step outside of, look at it and go, oh, that makes sense. And he talks about this servant who owes this incredible amount to this ruler he could never pay back. And, uh, and he's begging and he's begging and the ruler goes, you know what, I'm gonna cancel the debt. It would take him lifetime after lifetime after lifetime to pay back the debt. Okay, well then another servant works for this servant, owes him just a little bit, Hey, show me mercy. Give me time. You know, I'll figure it out. He, he has him beaten up, thrown into prison. And he goes, I'm not going to forgive you this debt, even though it's so minimal compared to this great debt that, that was forgiven him. And then the, the king finds out and goes, whoa, 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 did I not forgive you all of that debt? And then you turned around and wouldn't show mercy to your fellow servant? How much more wicked are you? And he has him thrown into prison. And Jesus tells this story and you're like, yeah, that guy's a jerk. I, I can't believe he would, you know, receive all that grace, receive all that mercy and let it just stop with him and not turn around and share it. Even the smallest amount with somebody else, it doesn't make any sense. And that's the, why, that's the whole point Jesus has given us this parable because we'd all go, that doesn't make any sense. Yet, when it comes to my life, when it comes to real life, I go, oh man, I want mercy for myself. I want God's grace for myself. And I want justice for all the people who've ever wronged me or owe me anything. And, and Jesus is going, you need to see the fallacy of that thinking. C.S. Lewis said, forgiveness is a really nice idea until you actually have to forgive. Yeah. And then it's really hard. Yeah. 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 I, I, the bottom line is, okay, so theologically and, and now, now practically, so let's compress it. And I said this uh, a week or so ago when we... Uh, started the series, the second week of the series. So our souls were created not to be a reservoir, but to be a river. Mm -hmm. There's the proverb that says, um, a generous person prospers. He who refreshes others will also be refreshed, which is all in the context of even what you just said. So whether we're talking about forgiveness, whether we're talking about money, uh, whatever mercy, whatever we're talking about. So the generous person prospers, he who refreshes others will also be refreshed. Here's the compression of all that. Your soul was created not to be a reservoir, but to be a river. So a reservoir receives, but doesn't 
doesn't give. Mm-hmm. Another word for refresh there in the Hebrew is water. He who waters others will themselves be watered. So, so think of your soul like a river. God works in his mercy into you, and then you work it out. You let that flow happen. God's been merciful to me, so I'm going to let that flow flow, right? Now I'm going to be merciful to somebody else. God forgives me, so I, I, as he works that in, I'm going to work it out. God, now we're talking about generosity the way most people think about it, but by the way, forgiveness and mercy and grace is all generosity. That's mm-hmm. at the core of that, but even monetarily, uh, God blesses me. And as I surrender to the flow of the river of how God wants to work in and through me, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, as God works that blessing into my life, and then I'm blessed to be a blessing to others. And so the more that we surrender to that flow, the more our soul is refreshed, the more that we see what God sees, the more that we become like God, because God is the very essence of that flow. Yeah. And in that, we're partnering with God. In, in this beautiful work of redemption he's doing in the world, because yeah. we're, we're a light, we're, we're, we're to reflect the light of God, and in that, draw people into relationship with him, and, and Lord willing, it spreads, right? So if you're generous towards me, now, now I'm generous towards somebody else who's generous towards somebody else, and, and on and on and on it goes, until the day Jesus comes back and makes all things right for all time. And, and we get to partner with God, just like he designed in Genesis 1 and 2, it's always meant to be in relationship and partnership with God. Yeah, so let's just put it all together. So we're, we're, Robert and I are in this moment are just painting these broad strokes of what the Scripture teaches. So think about the fruit of the Spirit for a mm-hmm. second. So the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. You don't have to remember that list. What religion is, okay, it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I need to be more patient. So I'm going to try really hard. Uh That's religion. I'm going to work. Yeah. What you're talking about, what the Bible's talking about in partnering with God is no, you're not trying to be more patient. What you're doing is surrendering to the flow of the spirit in your life and patience just shows up. Yeah. An apple tree does not have to try and produce apples. An apple tree simply surrenders to the life within, and as a result, apples show up. So the whole Christian life is, who is God? Am I allowing him to work in and through my life? Because as I allow him to work in and through my life, then his character qualities show up. Yeah. So it's, it's all of that flow idea. I, I remember... Um, and this was a few years ago, and, and I was racking my brain or, uh, about something at the church, and I was trying to make a decision. I'm like, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do, you know? And like, uh, just a little whisper, and I, this like really happened. This is kind of where I got this idea of Res- River Reservoir. Um, literally, I heard surrender to the flow. And I'm like, what, the, what does that mean, mm-hmm. right? And it's what I'm talking about right now. It's what we're talking about. It's, it's allow God just to move and work in your life and then, and then just release that out to, to other people. Mm-hmm. So let's practically talk about what that looks like. Yeah. Right? Well, so as you're talking, there's a, there's a mindset again, and, and I know I keep talking about mindset and filter and all that, but so much of this is just how we think. Uh, how we see the world, how we look at the world, uh, to be able to do what you're talking about, uh, I think there needs to be a fundamental understanding that everything belongs to God, that that we are temporary managers of of whatever God has entrusted us, whatever influence we have, whatever thing you know we have some control over. Uh, we we don't actually own any of it. We're we're managers. Um, C.S. Lewis gives this beautiful analogy of a kid, since we're quoting C.S. Lewis in this one, uh, a daughter who borrows six pence from her dad uh, to buy him a gift for his birthday. Six pence, British. Yeah. And so he gets the gift and opens six it. Pennies. And it's yeah. beautiful and it's great, but, but he knows he's, he's six pence, none the richer, as uh, C.S. Lewis says, um, on this whole deal, because it was his. It was the dad's money that he gave to the daughter to then buy him a gift, uh, but it's still beautiful. But there's an acknowledgement of all of it belongs to the father. All of it is his, and, and yet he invites us to partner with him in that. But even just that mindset change, uh, it helps me personally to be able to be generous, to realize I'm a manager. I can give away somebody else's money all day long. That's easy. When it, I think it's mine, I have a tougher time being yeah. generous with it. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it's, it's for the glory of God, it's for good. So think about right now, wherever you are, have you ever experienced the soul-satisfying joy of giving someone something? Hmm. Have you ever experienced the reality of more joy in your soul came from 
giving than it did receiving. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Well, it's because all this theology and soul talk that we're having right now is true. Uh Uh, It's just that simple. When you give, there's something that happens in your soul that's even more powerful than receiving. In that moment, you're in the flow of, of ultimate reality. You're in the flow of how God works and who God is. You're in the flow of why you were created and what God wants you to experience. It's actually the flow of love. Yeah. And to your point, it's not always logical, it's theological. We don't always feel that way. We don't think that. We go, that doesn't make any sense. Yet, that's just how it works in the kingdom of heaven. The more that you get to know God, the more sense it makes. And then you get to a place where you're like, as crazy as some of this sounds, it can't be any other way. Mm -hmm. It has to be grace. It has to be generosity. It has to be mercy. Because if it's not that, We're all in trouble. We're all in trouble. And yet it is that, and there's great hope. And, uh, you know, we spend our whole lives learning to the flow of that hope, to that generosity, that grace, that that mercy. God works it in. We work it out. Yeah. Hopefully this helps you just think through it, process through it. I don't know if you're listening with somebody, but to to have conversations about it. I I think this is important for us to process or we get sucked in to just it being about us and and not letting the, the... the love of God flow through us. And um, if this is helpful for you, uh, we want you to share it. Uh, You can subscribe. We have these podcasts that are coming out regularly, as well as uh, we got some other things going on at Sun Valley. Like, subscribe, share if this is helpful for you. And uh, we'll continue the conversation next week.